doesn't know how lucky he was when he won that toss and didn't have to go on the cattle drive. I don't care if I never drive cattle again. Yeah, sure dusty. Dusty? I got enough dirt in my mouth to plant corn in. Well, wash it out with this. Thanks. I'll wash it out with something better than water. I wonder what's keeping pot. It's a lot of money. Yep, all for taxes. Half death and taxes. Stop complaining. I'm just complaining about the dirt in my mouth. Well, here it is. Ten thousand dollars drawn on Wells Fargo Company. Now, I've already endorsed it. Isn't that kind of dangerous? I mean, anybody could cash it down. Well, maybe it is, but we've got to get this money to the territorial tax office before noon on Saturday, and we've also got to get to the Double C Ranch before they sell off all that good stock. All right, who makes the trip to Genoa? Well, Adam, uh, you know all about our tax setup. <clears throat> I accept. I'd much rather ride to Genoa than drive that breeding stock up through those mountains. Yeah, well, who wouldn't? I think we ought to toss on it, Pa. No, it's all settled. Adam, I guess you'd better get started right away. Yep, won't be safe in there. Now, remember, you've got till the day after tomorrow, no longer. I'll see you in about four days. important, Jeff. It is. Another prison break. How many this time? Two. Got away early this morning. Now, we want you to wire all town marshals and sheriffs in a hundred-mile area. Ask them to organize posses. All right, Jeff. I hope you catch them. Always do. But these two are tough hombres. They're hold-up men and they're killers. <laughs> be the place. I can't drag that chain another foot. Ah, uh, this is it, all right. Uh, as soon as Brubaker gets here with those horses, we'll be all the way to get the chisel to break these blasted oh, chains. Ah, no, he won't. He won't. He won't. Uh, well, you're betting a lot on him. Lousy prison guard. Well, he may be a lousy prison guard, but he helped us escape. He uh, set that chase going in the wrong direction. Oh, well, he'll be here, all right. <sighs> Maybe. Drooling for that money. <laughs> well, see you boys made it all right. Yeah, we made it. Where's the horses? Yeah, where's the chisel to break these chains? I risked enough letting you escape and setting a false trail. Any more than that, make the odds too high. Too high for who, Brubaker? For me. Come on, Trace. Where's the money? So all you care about is the money? That 5,000 you got buried, now where is it? Well, all right. There's really nothing we can do about it, on Point Dexter. No. You want it or not? Well, where is it? Right here, Brubaker. You stupid prison guy. He fell for it, Trace. You kill me, would you, Trace? Get out of those clothes quick. Help me escape, Trace, didn't I? Well, didn't I? Mm hmm. I'm going to give you a chance to go back and tell that warden just how you did it. Get out of those clothes quick. I'd kill you. That's only close enough for you, Trace. How about me? 
Uh, there's a little town named Bowleg a few miles from here. We'll get you fixed up there. Oh, come on, Chef. Come on. What's the hold up anyway? Let's get this whole thing over with. We're waiting for Henry Neighbors. And Billy McCord. If I didn't let that boy come along, he'd quit. But I sure hate leaving my stables untended. Look, Townsend, you don't have to go if you don't want to. We're short-handed, what with the roundup and all. Oh, I'll go. Because I'm sure getting tired of these blind chases. Whole town is. Oh, quit complaining. Think of the business I'm losing, having to close down my gambling tables and all. And five will get you 50, we come back with nothing but saddle sores. I'm only doing what the territorial governor expects us to do. Let's go get him, Sheriff. Sure would like to have me a couple of convicts, scalps. Put that thing away before I take it away from you. Dang kids. Settle down now. We're waiting for Henry Neighbors. Did you finish cleaning out all them stalls? Yeah. You throw hay in them? Yes, I threw hay in them. Hey, Sheriff, ain't that going to get me a badge? Yeah, you'll get a badge against my better judgment. Hey, here comes old Turkey Neck. Henry? Henry? You got your slicker? It might rain. Remember, you caught a bad cold last time you went out with the boys. I have it, Martha. Your handkerchief? Yes, Martha. Sheriff, uh, Good. you think I she's going along with us? <laughs> I won't, Martha. Hey, come on, old man. Them convicts ain't going to wait for us. I'm uh, sorry I had to call on you again, Henry. All right. Here, let me take that. You'll stick yourself and bleed all over your clean shirt. Thank you, Martha. I'll be with you in just a minute, Sheriff. Well, if we're going, let's get moving. Oh, there's gloves in the saddle roll, Henry. All right. Goodbye, Martha. Goodbye, Henry. And, Henry, I ain't worried about you running into them criminals, but don't fall off the horse. I won't, Martha. Goodbye. Goodbye, Henry. Yeah, I'll hold and you get on. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Martha. Come on. Come on. Bye, Henry. Goodbye. Come on. Come on. Uh, get off. Let's give the horse time to rest a little bit. Listen, Trace. These chains, we gotta be smart and keep moving. Posse will be combing the whole territory for us. For us? Well, yeah. Well, you wouldn't, Trace. I, I mean, after us busting out together and everything. Here's where we part company. Now, you'd slow me down. Horse can't make any time riding double. Oh, you can't. You move off over there about 20 feet. Move. Far enough. Now, here I'm going to leave you this rifle. Now, if you get in any real trouble, now you use it. Good luck, Porn Dexter. Trace! Please!
Get down off that horse. You heard me. Get down. Just unbuckle that gun belt. Throw it all out in front of you. Now get to shucking them clothes. You heard me. Save some of that. You sound just like your wife. Yeah, well, we got no chance of finding anybody in all this country. Criminals don't come this way anyhow. Maybe not, but we got to try. He could come this way. Put that thing away. You know something, Sheriff? I got a feeling. I got a feeling I'm going to get my first notch. Put it away. Yes, sir. -y. How you doing, Henry? You feel you can make a few more miles? Yeah, sure. Don't worry about me. Well, come on, then. Please don't hit me no more. Please, don't hit me no more. Please, please, please. Uh, please. Take it easy, old timer. I'm not gonna hit you. Here, let's have no. a look at that. No. Now. Come on, come no, on. Please, please. That doesn't seem to be too serious. Let's see if we can get you over there on that cut. Get on your feet. No, please. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna hit me. Please, please. Come on, no. please. you're gonna be all right. No. You just sit right down there, man. Go. See if 
that doesn't make it feel a little better, huh? How many of you broke out of prison? I mean, the clothes, they're not mine. If you come here looking for your friend, he's been and gone. Right there's his leg irons, if and you don't believe me. How long has he been gone? Well, I told you, he just left. Listen, uh, my name is Cartwright, Adam Cartwright. You see, this fellow drew From down on me, he took my... From the way. Why, sure, I know your pa well. But what you doing in them there duds? Well, like I was saying, this fellow that hit you drew down on me and he took my horse and my clothes and... Well, I want to catch him, but quick. Now, I could use one of your horses and maybe some clothes and a gun if you got one. How come you want to go after a dangerous hombre like that? Well, it just so happened that there was a bank draft in my saddle pocket, about $10,000 worth, and I mean to get it back. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I ain't got no clothes for you, but the horse and gun you can have. <laughs> that is, if that other fella didn't take it, no. No, no, here it is. He didn't find it. It's here, all right. Here you are. Listen, do you uh, think maybe you could get to the nearest town and uh, maybe alert the sheriff there? That'd be bow legs, and, and don't you worry none. I can make it. A crack on the head don't hurt an old desert rat like me. Good. Come on, now, we better saddle you up a horse and quick, huh? Sure, give me a start there. Why, why, you're one of them guards from the prison. Now, the convict got away in one of your horses, huh? Well, don't worry, old man. I'll get it back for you. Uh, that weren't the way it was at all. I'd give it to him. You give him your horse? Yeah, because a convict made him change clothes and stole his horse. And that real convict, he came here and made me take off his chains, and he, and he hit me on the head right here. Oh, who's this other fella? Adam Cartwright. I know his whole family. And, and Adam, he went after that there convict to get his horse and saddle back. Well, he's just got to. He's got to? Huh? Why? Because there's a bank draft in that there saddle pocket. And a big one. A bank draft? Well, it's uh, the same as money in it. You know how much? Ten thousand dollars, he said. And I'm riding to the town for help, right now. Uh-uh. Get in the house, old man. Come on. Another two hours and we'll fry in our own grease. Ha, you slob! What's the matter with you? Yeah, it'll be hot, all right. That's why the convicts had never come this way. Mm. What's the matter? You don't like my coffee? Well, you know, maybe we should have brought along old Martha to do it for you. She, um, she button your shoes, don't she? If this is the best you could do, maybe we should have brought her. 
Well, it should be safe enough. We're always getting up posses, but we don't ever catch nobody. Well, I got me a feeling this time. You got a feeling. Well, I got a feeling. We don't get nothing for catching them, and it's 20 to 1. Another, another posse's already caught them down by the border. We got to look. Why? Every day I'm away from my business, it costs me business. You call that tin horn gambling join a business? Now, you shut up, stable boy. Get back to your shovel. I'll kill you. You ever say that again, I'll kill you. Cord, put that gun down. I said put it down. You saw that, Sheriff. You saw that. Don't ever ask me to go riding possibly with you oh, again. Shut up. Shut up, all of you. Stop all this jawway. We got enough to do without quarreling amongst ourselves. And you, McCord, you pull that gun again without reason, and I'll take it away from you. Somebody put out that fire. Let's get back in the saddle. <clears throat> I'm going to get my first notch. You shut up and keep still. Come from over there. Got time for a drink of water, Sheriff? My mouth's kind of dry. Those mine. Come on. Come on, boy. Let's go. Come on, poke your head up again. I'll knock it off. Glad to see you. Well, there's your prisoner. He uh, waylaid me back down the road there and made me change clothes with him. 
Take off your gun belt. You don't understand. The man escaped from your prison and uh, he stopped me back there. Take off your gun belt. Turn around. You're making a mistake, mister. My name's Cartwright. Well, what's all this about? Get over by that tree. You stay put. Howdy. Howdy. Where are you from, Sheriff? I'm Hill from Bowlegs, looking for convicts. I guess we got one. We got two. I'm Brubaker, territorial prison. Which one's he? It's Elmer Trace. Sheriff, that is not right. My name is Adam Cartwright. Shut up. I'll keep him shut. Now, you listen to me, Sheriff. I am no convict. Shut your mouth. I want to get this thing straightened out. I'm not Elmer Trace. I said shut up. Go ahead. Go ahead, hit me. I sure would like to kill you. McCord, take it easy. Why, he's a lousy convict. He just killed a man a few minutes ago. What do you expect me to do, hold his hand? Take it easy, I say. We'll hear your story a little later. I hear this Elmer Trace is a real hard character. Oh. Who do you think that dead man is over there? Don't know. It's his partner. You mean he killed his partner? They probably waylaid some poor devil and then got into a quarrel about who's going to wear his clothes and ride his horse. Well, Sheriff, shouldn't we uh, search the prisoner or, or something? Yeah, I was going to do that. Take those, will you? Yeah. It's terrible. Terrible. Killing and robbing. You like lawn? Well, like what? Being a lawman, going on posses and all. Boy, I sure would. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I just love it. Running after some gun-happy convict with maggots where his brains ought to be. Waiting for him to bushwhack you. Yeah, I like it all right. Yeah, well, don't worry. He's going to get his. They're going to hang him. Will they? Judges and jury, all that, huh? Search him good, Sheriff. I know these prisoners, they got knives and all kinds of things hidden on them. Well, there ain't nothing on this one. I want to ask you some questions. We already know all the answers. Where'd you get that gun? From an old prospector, a little ways back. What was his name? I don't know. You borrow a gun from a man, you don't know his name? Well, I'd have to tell you the whole story, or you won't believe any of it. We ain't gonna believe none of it anyhow. I'm still waiting to hear where you got that gun. There ain't nobody around here faster than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're pretty fast with that thing, kid. Well, I practice all the time. What do you do when you're not practicing? I work for Mr. Townsend in his livery stable. Oh. What a shame. A man of your ability. What I really want to be is a, a deputy. Full-time deputy. Hmm. 
Are you through with him? Search him? Yeah, nothing on him. Mm. He'll set the time across the saddle. To get them good clothes. Oh, well, they obviously killed somebody for him. Them rotten murders. What do you suppose they'll do with him? Oh, he'll get five years, maybe less. Five years, maybe less for murder? All he needs is a good lawyer. There ought to be something we can do about it. Maybe there is. We'll be right with you. Yeah. I tell you, Sheriff, I'm not a convict. Shut up, cowboy. We've heard enough out of you. Ted will get you 40. You've done this before. Let's get this over with. Oh, no, McCord. You ain't gonna do that. I ain't asking, Sheriff. I said we're gonna hang him. I don't want another chirp out of you, boy. They never take him in alive. You know how they take them in? Tied across the saddle. That's right. Let's go. Hold it! I'll kill the first man that puts a rope on him. This man here ain't worth taking in alive. What kind of a law officer are you, anyway? He's law man enough to know that, that no jury's gonna hang him. They're gonna turn him loose. That's for a jury to decide, not us. Man has a right to prove his innocence. Now, if you take me back to Genoa, you'll find that people back there know me. I say we stream up. I've had enough out of you. Shut up! Give me that rope, kid. I tell you what this man is doing here. He's stalling for time. It's a long way to you know. A lot can happen between here and there. He's right. Why don't you listen to him? All right, Sheriff. The prospector. The man that gave me the gun. Now, he lives only half a dozen miles from here. Take me back there. He knows me. That's all I ask is a chance. You men want him on your conscience? Well, I don't. All right, mister, that's what you get, a chance. Get him on the horse and let's go. You serious about wanting to take a job, Lon? Sure I am. I want that badge. That'll stop them. Stop who? Everybody's laughing at me behind my back. I know they do it. But that's why I'm gonna get them. Easy, easy. You know, I don't want that killer taken back alive. You help me, I'll help you.
The old fellow's dead. I can't believe it. Go have a look. Not you. Caught right. You're Trace, aren't you? Mm hmm. You know what I want. <laughs> they won't believe you, they want to hang you. Oh, the sheriff ain't going to be able to stop them. Would you hand me that little bank draft? I'll stop them. Now, I got nothing to lose. That's good enough for me. I say we hang him right now. Well, it's what I've been telling you all along. Guess we should have listened to the kid. It's still not too late. You still holding out? I'm against it. I'm against it, and so is Hill. Hill, come on out here. You try to stop us, I'll see you lose your job. Don't you threaten me, Townsend. I ain't taking that kind of talk. Well, now, if you don't want in on it, take a little walk till it's over. Unbuckle that gun belt and drop it. Ooh. He was asking for it. Now, there ain't nothing stopping us. It's your last chance. You change your mind, you just let me know. Stop! Stop or I'll shoot! There ain't gonna be no hanging, it ain't right. No, no, you take your hands away from that gun. Doesn't mean I won't shoot you too. I don't know how to handle this, but the sheriff will know what he comes to. Now, you, you go on, get back to the shack and take him inside. Go on, hurry. Go on, hurry. I swear, you come any closer and I'll shoot. Easy, easy. Watch his eyes. You stay where you are, do you hear? I'm not fooling him. You stay there or I'll shoot. Relax it now. Go on, hurry. Now. for what you've done, neighbors. You sure surprised me. Just keep that handkerchief pressed against the wound and the bleeding will stop. I'll get you to a doctor as soon as we get out of this mess. Why didn't you show me this bank draft before? I suspected the guard was Trace. I'd given you the draft then, he'd have killed you for it. How did Trace know that you had it? Well, I guess the prospector told him before he killed him. How you doing, Mr. Neighbors? Weak. Well, you lost a lot of blood. It's beginning to hurt, too. Think you're strong enough to guard that window? I think so. Are you going to make hold this door? Maybe. Get more. That back window. Somebody's trying to sneak around the back. Neighbors is watching that back window. Good. As long as they think that back window's being watched, they're not going to try to leave. Well, use that wagon over there. The wagon? It's a ram. 
A little around that door, huh? Hey, McCord! Come here, I want to talk. Go ahead, talk to him, kid. Make sure he doesn't open that door. Come on. What do you want here? You're making a mistake, McCord. I know what I'm doing. This fella here is Adam Cartwright. Not gonna work. I can prove it. Lift up the tongue. That fellow you think's a prison guard is Elmer Trace. I think you're lying. I think you got a gun pointed at that stupid sheriff of ours. That's right, kid. Keep talking to him. Hey, Hill. Hey, Hill, you tell neighbors. You tell him I could have shot him through any eyes if I'd have wanted. Oh, hell! We're coming in after him. Okay, we'll push it from back. You're gonna get off easy, didn't you? I'll get the rope. You too, Sheriff. All right, kid, back over here. Townsend, skid more. Drop your guns. to get me $10,000, kid. Cartwright's got a bank draft that's worth that much. Now, you in with me, huh? 50-50? Partners? Stutter, you're dead. You lied to me. Ah! Stupid! Come on, get over there, Sheriff. All right, Cartwright. And now you don't care much for Junior here. If you don't come up with that bank draft, this future lawman is dead. Let the boy go, Trace. I'll give you the draft. He was a lawman. I made a big mistake. I... Well, you didn't make the mistake you nearly could have made. All of you. And you fellas don't have to worry about being called for posse duty again. You'd better find a way to thank Henry Neighbors. Now put him on a horse and get him to a doctor. Yeah. 
Let me get him. Okay, I'm just a neighbor. Take this one with you. I've known these men for years. Strange which one turned out to be the real man. Yeah. I hope I see you again. Be a pleasure, Sheriff. mighty good on paper, but I think I'd like to see it close up again. All right. Father, you've seen that lumber a dozen times. Do you think Mr. Cartwright chopped it down since the last time you saw it? <laughs> now, Susan, you know better than that. Susan, your boy has a perfect right to see that timberland again if he wants to before he buys it. He sure has. Mr. Blanchard, we have a wagon down at the Liberty Stable. I can drive you out whenever you want to go. Oh, that's a good idea. What about it, Susan? Would you like to come along? I'd love it. Good. Boy, you, you got a bunch to do. Won't you let me drive? Oh, you can't drive with that bad arm. Honey, with one arm, I can drive better than 90% of the people in this town. Yeah, that isn't the way you were talking when we drove into town. <laughs> I guess you make oh, up. Oh, look. Look. Look at that horse. A real miracle maker. Why don't you ask him to heal that shoulder of yours? Oh. I don't believe in them fellas, Susan. Run out of that snake oil and they're finished. Size of my old shoulder's about well in here. <laughs> You're very fortunate to be able to laugh at your troubles. That your injury can mend. There are others not so fortunate. Are you, uh, Mr. Garth? I am what the young lady laughingly referred to as the miracle maker. If your shoulder doesn't mend, perhaps I can help you. Oh, my goodness. Do you think I hurt his feelings? No, don't pay me any attention, Susan. Well, if we're going to look at that timber, we'd better be on our way. Yeah. about an hour. Oh, don't, don't hurry now. I'll take care of the supplies down to the store. And take it easy with these people. I don't want you dumping our prospective customers in a ditch somewhere. No. Why don't you let me drive horses? It's such a lovely day, and I want to give us a real exciting ride. I don't know, Susie. These old horses have been spooked all day. Oh, come on, horse, please. Better not argue with a horse. When she's in this kind of mood, she can't win. I don't want my head caved in, too. Here. Ah. Mr. Cartwright! What is it, Jeff? What's the matter? It's been an accident. just a little tired of hearing you say that over and over and over again. Now, let me tell you something. It was an accident. It could have happened no matter who was driving. Now, you've just got to stop eating your heart out. I appreciate your concern. I know how you feel. But you can't take the whole responsibility on your own shoulders. <laughs> if, if, if we were to start feeling responsible for everything that happened in life, why, how could we live? 
Yeah, I reckon you're right, Paul. But Susan don't understand that. I'm gonna ride out there. Dr. Moore's got that specialist out there today, and I wanna see what he's got to say. Fine. Fine. I'll ride out with you. But remember, it was an accident. What'd you find out, Doc? I examined Miss Blanchard very carefully. The bruises and lacerations are healing quite well. What about her legs, Doctor? Will my niece walk again? I can only confirm what Dr. Moore has already said. I can find nothing wrong with her legs. But, but Doc, if there ain't nothing wrong with her legs, how come she can't walk? Dr. Moore, isn't there somebody else we could call in? Someone from New York, maybe? Celia, Dr. Gross is the finest man in the country in this field. Thank you. Is there another stage today? I should get back to San Francisco as quickly as possible. Yes, there's a stage late this afternoon. Let me make you all some tea before you leave. You're very kind. Is it all right if I go in here and see her? Go ahead. Hi, Susie. Doctor said I could come in and see you a minute. It's kind of dark in here, don't you? Do you want me to lift one of these shades? Leave them alone, horse. I like it this way. All right. That's the way you like it. Doctor says you, you're doing real good. Gonna be up in no time. I know what the doctor said, horse. Well, his ain't the last word, Susie. The, there's lots of other doctors. I'm tired of doctor's horse. Tired of all that probing and poking. And all for nothing. Susie, you, you can't talk like that. You can't just give up. You know it, horse, and I know it. I'm never going to walk again. Oh, if, if that ain't the dead burnest bunch of foolishness I ever heard in my life, well, we get a doctor and find out what's ailing you, you're gonna be as good as new and up in no time. My father's dead, horse. My father's dead. All because of my foolishness. Susie, you, you, you can't keep on blaming yourself for that, and no more than I can. My Paul says if people go through life blaming themselves for everything that happens, well, life just ain't, ain't worth living. It isn't. Now you listen to me. Horse, I don't want to listen to anyone anymore. Just leave me be. Please. We're going to find a way, Susie. I promise you we're going to find a way. Doing all they can, Hoss. You two fellows are doctors. You ought to know what to do. But we're only doctors, not miracle makers, only human beings. We honestly don't know what's wrong with Susan. Maybe we never will. Maybe whatever it is will gradually disappear. We just don't know. You just don't know. And you're doctors. What good are you? Hoss. It's all right, Ben. Your nerves are all riled up since the accident, Hoss. You know, I think you feel guilty. Sometimes guilt makes people feel edgy. That's exactly what's wrong with Susan right now. She blames herself for her pa's death. As Dr. Moore said, guilt affects the mind strangely. 
Doctor, do you think perhaps Susan doesn't want to walk? Perhaps. But the mind is a strange world in itself. Maybe someday it will be as important to treat the mind as we try to treat the body today. I don't know about this kind of talk. All I know is we've got to figure out some way to help Susan. We can be patient, hope, and pray. That'll be a great comfort to her. I know. I wish there was something else we could give her. Now I really must be going. Boss. Awesome. Would you uh, drive Dr. Gross and Dr. Moore into town? I've got to get back to the ranch if Miss Celia can give me a horse. Well, help yourself, Ben. Bye, Miss Celia. Miss Celia? First meeting. From this small group, the believers will grow. And I'm sure that by the time I leave, this humble meeting place will not be able to contain them all. Then, friends, take heed and listen to my message. For my power will grow. The knowledge of my power will grow and magnify. And then the faithful shall be healed. Why not now? You talk about helping people. Help me. Who are you, my unfortunate friend? Poor man who can't make a living for himself anymore. And what has happened to you? Oh, about five years ago, a bronc throwed me. I've been like this ever since. Drifting, living through the grace of handouts. Unable to get my leg up over a horse at a pile of hay in the stable. You with your fancy words of faith and cures. You tell me there's hope for someone like me? What hope is there for you? I have seen the troubles that have been handed down to the son of man to be exercised in their life. I have seen the woes, the tribulations, the despairs which have been heaped on the head of all mankind. They have all cried to me for help, for a miracle. What is it that you want from me, a candy-coated cloud, a tomorrow's paradise? I want to be able to walk upright again. I want to work again. How much do you want it? For your cure stands here before you. If you believe in me, you can be cured. Some who have sown in tears have reaped in joy. And the lame have walked, the blind have seen, and the deaf have heard. And me. Help me. Do you believe in me? Do you have faith in me? Yes. I believe. Oh, then, my friend, as I lay my hands on you now, believe in me, trust in me. Open your soul, open your heart to me. Believe in me, and your body will straighten. Have faith in me, and you will walk upright again. Straighten your body. Five years since my fall. Five years of drifting around and begging for handouts, and now I can walk. You hear that, friend? Five long years, now I can walk! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Could I talk to you, sir? What about Finn? That crippled fellow, you just... You just help. I'd, I'd like to talk to you about him if I could. Come with me to my hotel. Susie. 
Susie, it's me, Horse. I know. I heard you talking to Aunt Celia. Susie, there's, there's something I gotta talk to you about. Another doctor. No, 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 it, it ain't a doctor, but it's a fellow that's liable to be able to help you. I just want to be left alone. Susie, you gotta listen to me. This fellow's liable to really be able to help you. Horse, go away. Please go away. Susie, just listen to me for a minute. It's about this fellow named Garth. Garth? You mean that man in town, the faith healer? Susie, he's, he's sure enough, he's helped people. I saw him cure an old cowboy that was all stove up and bent and crooked from a fall. He, he made him stand up straight and walk again. Susie, it can't do no harm to talk to him. I told you I don't want to talk to anyone. Feeling guilty about your paw again, ain't you? Susie, I... I feel guilty about you. I reckon it's just something we'll have to live with the rest of our lives. Horse? Horse, I don't want you to suffer. It was all my fault. Will it make you feel better if I... See this man? Susie. Anything that'll help you make me feel better. I, I just want you to talk to him, that's all. All right. I'll talk to him, Horace. I don't know about this, Horsa. I just don't know. But, Miss Celia, I done told you I talked to Susan and she wants to see him. I was under the impression that you'd explain this to the young lady's family, Mr. Cartwright. I'm sorry, madam. I hadn't intended forcing my way in. Just a minute. Miss Celia, you do want to help Susan, don't you? You don't want to see her lay in there in that room the rest of her life. Horsa, oh, you know I don't, but this kind of thing... Well, ma'am, what harm can it do? We've already tried everything else. I beg your pardon, Mr. Garth. I didn't mean to be rude. Susan wants to see you. Naturally, you can see her. Thank you. Where is she? There in that room. Go on, I'll show you. All right. If you don't mind. Don't open the blinds. I want it dark. Do not be afraid of the light. I am Garth. I am here to help you. Oh, that's wonderful, Horst. <laughs> I'll tell you, they had a bunch of them. It was one of the funniest minstrel shows I've ever seen. Oh, I wish I could have been there. <laughs> oh, Horst, I haven't even asked you about your arm. How is it? Oh, it's fine, Susan. I'll be out of this rig in a couple of days, I reckon. You're the one that counts. How are you feeling? How are you getting along? Oh, Garth says that I'm making marvelous progress. Well, it's been a couple of weeks. Oh, well, Garth tells me it won't be much longer. He thinks I'm doing beautifully. Well, Susie, it's, it's you that I'm interested in. How, how do you feel? Well, I feel wonderful. And every day I seem to get more confidence. Oh, before the summer is over, Hoss, I'm going to walk again. Good. You moving your feet or legs or anything? No. But God says that it happens all at once when I have complete faith in him. Yeah. It appears to me like you've got plenty of faith in him already. Oh, I do. But I guess I just don't have enough, do I? Well, good morning, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Garth? Uh, Susan. Oh, I'm sorry, Hoss, but I... Got to go to work now. Oh, I'll run along. I'll see you later. Well, before you go, Mr. Cartwright, Susan is entering a very critical phase of her treatment. It might help her if you didn't see her for a while. Mr. 
Garth, Susie and me have been friends for a long, long time. What possible harm could it be me coming to see her? Well, Susan and I are entering a period of intense concentration. Any influence outside, no matter how friendly, would tend to destroy that concentration. It might slow down her recovery. Tend to make it impossible altogether. I'm sure you understand. Susie, is, is that the way you want it? You want me to come back? Well, it's, if Mr. Garth wants it, if he thinks it's best. I'm afraid I do, Susan. I think it's vital. Well, that's the way it'll be, then. I'll see you later, Susan. Well, it won't be for long. I'll send for you. Bye. Goodbye, Mr. Cartwright. Goodbye, Hoss. You must have faith in me, Susan. Faith so complete and absolute that it fills every portion of your being and leaves no room for the slightest shred of doubt. Do you have faith in me, Susan? Yes. Yes, I do. Do you have such unquestioning faith that you will do exactly as I say, simply because I say it? Yes, Garth. Well, what's the matter, Garth? There seems to be a limit to your faith. Oh, no, there isn't. No, there isn't. I have the most complete faith in you. You think you do, but you've never had complete faith before, so how can you possibly know what it's like? Well, I'm trying as hard as I can. There's something in there, something like a barrier that's holding you back, something like a dam, something we must remove if you're to be cured. Well, I'm not aware of it. But it's there. Removing it will take an even greater effort on your part. You've, you've given so much of your time to me. There are so many others you could be helping. Maybe I shouldn't keep you to myself anymore. You're an unusual woman, Susan. Lovely of face and form. And most important, so unselfish. Thank you. Do you know I've never seen you smile before? In the world I see, there's little enough to smile at. Wretchedness, poverty of spirit. Garth, if you feel you ought to move on, I'd understand. No, we've made too much progress to stop now. There's one last effort you can make, if you're willing to try it. I'll try anything if it will only make me walk again. I think what is needed to, to break the barrier that preventing your cure is an act of blind, unquestioning faith. An act by which... An act by which you place yourself completely in my hand. When you have put yourself in a position where you must trust me, where you must have faith in me, then and only then can you be cured. What do you want me to do? I thought. I'll tell you when I've decided. Well, I got your message. What do you want? I want to talk to you. Well, make it fast. Will you have to get back in the house? I've been working here for two weeks and you haven't told me a thing. I want to know what's going on. Look, I told you repeatedly, my ways are my own. And I told you I ain't leaving without part of that money. What money? Oh, now don't treat me like one of your stupid followers. I know how rich that girl is and I know you're planning on getting some of it and I want my share. You made a mistake, Thorne. This girl is sensitive. She's an intelligent, unusual girl. I'm going to do everything I can to help her. Poppycock. You've been preaching for so long you're starting to believe your own words. Well, if you don't agree with my words, maybe it's time you left. Oh, no. You're not getting rid of me. I'm staying for this one. And it better not be too long. Who 
is it? Dark. May I come in? Yes, of course. I spoke to you about an act of faith this morning, Susan. Yes? Well, I've been thinking about it ever since. Oh, so have I. And I've been worrying about it. Well, you shouldn't worry about it, Susan. I'd hoped you were looking forward to it for a chance to express yourself in one of the most beautiful of all basic human emotions. I never thought of it that way. It sounded more like a test. What do you want me to do? Susan, I... I want you to marry me. Am I presuming too far? I... I don't know. It's just that I never thought anyone would want to marry me the way I am. Perhaps this will help you have faith in me. Faith that I'll be able to kill you. But it's all so mechanical. I always thought that I would marry because of love. But faith and love are but two sides of the same coin. One cannot exist without the other. But underneath all those words, Garth, aren't you asking me to marry you so that I can walk again? No. Garth, that, that wouldn't be right. Susan, I'm asking you to marry me because I love you. Susan, please, marry me. Don't you see I need you as much as you need me? God, you, you need me. bit tighter, will you? I said a little bit tighter. I notice you're not going over to Susan Blanchard's every day now. Have you heard how things are going? Well, I decided I'd stay away for a while. As long as that Garth helps Susan, that's all I care about. Well, she sure got a lot of faith in him. Uh, reckon she should. He's done her a lot of good, Joe. Done a lot of folks some good. Have you seen that Thorn ride lately? Ain't nobody rides any better than he does. Yeah, I've seen him. Rides awful good for a man who hasn't been on horseback for five years. Maybe a little bit too good. What are you driving at? Everybody's always taking a dig at Garth. Yeah, maybe you're right. Just a feeling I have. Oh, Hoss. One of the Blanchard ranchmen just rode by. I had a message for you. What sort of message? Susan wants to see you. Hey, you don't reckon she's, you don't reckon she's walking? No, I, I don't know. It didn't say anything about that. Yeah. Sure, just might be. I better get over there. I'm sorry I ever taught you how to braid these things. You've been braiding them since you were five years old. Oh, Horse, it's so good to see you. Susan. Good afternoon, Mr. Cartwright. Just a few days ago that you asked me not to come back. What's happened? We have news for you. A surprise? Might be. Susan has consented to be my wife. Is what? Yes, we're getting married, Hoss. And I would like you to give me away. But Susie, you hardly know this man. He's almost a complete stranger. He's no stranger to me, Hoss. We love each other. What's all the big, big hurry about? Won't you wait until you're for sure, Susie? I'm sure now. The sooner the better, for Susan's sake. We're planning it for Saturday. Horse, will you be there? I'll let you know, Susie. I'll let you know. The news. 
Congratulations. Pretty smart. Great big ranch. All that cattle. Look, what do you want, Thorne? I want my share. There aren't going to be any shares. I'm marrying Susan because I love her. Sure. And what's going to happen when the little lady finds out you can't make her walk? Listen, she's going to see through you before the ink's dried on that license. Maybe. Maybe she can be cured. I have a feeling sometimes at the right time with the right person, maybe I could cure her. Listen, you couldn't even cure a hangnail. But I'll tell you what you're going to do, Garth. You're going to go in and get some money from that little lady, and you're going to give me my share. No, I'm not. The agreement we had before is all over. Is it? Yes. And suppose I tell the little lady the truth. What happens to you then? Never come back here again. I'll kill you. Son, I... I think you ought to do as Susan asks. Give her away at the wedding. Oh, how can she love him? She doesn't even know him. Oh, sometimes... Two people just look at each other once, and they're in love. What's really bothering you? Oh, I, I took Garth out there so he could make Susan walk again. Mm -hmm. I never figured on anything like this. Thorne, what are you doing here? I want to see you. Come in. Paul, this is this is Mr. Thorne, the feller I was telling you about that Mr. Garth healed downtown. Oh, yeah. I'm pulling up stakes and I'm leaving tonight, but before I go, there's something I want to tell you. Go on. That Garth, the great healer, he's a fake. What do you mean? Every time we go to a new town and start a meeting, he cures me. That sets up the suckers real good for him. Now he's going to marry that girl for her money and that big ranch her father left her. Paul, that explains it, don't you see? That explains everything, the marriage. You're going to go back out there and confront him with me. Oh, no. I ain't going to get myself killed. Thorne! Thorne! Hoss! Hoss! Oh, you, you don't need him out there. But, Paul, I, I, I can't let her go through with this. Thorn being out there isn't going to help anything. Not if Susan really loves Garth. Oh, Paul, she can't love him. She's, she's in love with what, with what she thinks he is. Don't you see? He's got some kind of a hold on her or something. Paul, I can't let her go through with it. Yeah, maybe you're right. I... But you got to be real careful the way you break this to Susan. Yeah. I'll think of something. Celia, I'd like to talk to Susan. I just got her ready for bed. You can see her in the morning. Well, I think maybe she'd like to say goodnight to me. Now, God, just a minute, please. I... If it's money you want, I can get it for you. I'm a fairly wealthy woman in my own right. Just why are you telling me this? Because I want you to leave here. Miss Celia, I'm in love with Susan. I'm going to marry her. I think the sooner you accept that, the sooner we'll all be happy here. You just want the ranch and her money. I don't believe you love her. 
You love her. Do you want to deprive her of happiness? Perhaps even the chance to walk again? I've been waiting for you to say goodnight. I'm glad. I, I wanted to talk to you, Susan. Why, is something wrong? No. How lovely you are. I love you so much. And I love you, Garth. Susan, why do we have to wait? Can't we be married tomorrow? I don't have any objections, Garth, but we haven't heard from Hoss yet. Is that so important? Do we have to wait for him? Well, it is rather important to me, Garth. We grew up together and we've always been such good friends. And a girl only gets married once and I... I would like to have him at my wedding. We can wait a few days, can't we? Susan, I'm afraid. Afraid? Of what? People, they... they don't understand me. They don't understand my abilities. I'm afraid they're gonna try and keep us apart. Nothing will ever keep us apart, Garth. Nothing. Susan, this is so important to the both of us. Why... Why take a chance? Why run the risk of perhaps losing... Well, if we don't hear from Hoss by tomorrow, you can go and make arrangements for the next day. Will that be all right? Yeah. Yes, of course. Good night. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Well, good evening. I'd like to talk to you alone. Outside. What's in your mind, Mr. Cartwright? What kind of man are you, Garth? Really? What, uh, what do you mean? I just had a little visit with your compadre, Thorne. Oh. Well, look, let me explain to you about Thorne. Don't bother. Don't bother. He gave me all the facts. Well, he gave you the facts, but I want to tell you the reasons behind those facts. I'd like to hear them. All right. Look, in order for me to be able to heal anybody, they have to have faith in me. They have to believe in me. Now, Thorne's little demonstration is like, a, like an incentive. With that evidence, false as it may be, they begin to believe in me. They begin to have faith in me. Like Susan. Well, yeah, well, like Susan. But Thorne tells me you're a complete, a, a total fake. Now, what happens when Susan discovers that? What happens when she finds out you can't help her? But I, I believe I can. Susan isn't just following after me, begging to be cured. Look, I... I, I fall in love with Susan. Listen to me. You listen to me real good, Garth. I brought you to Susan. I'm responsible for any influence you might have over good or bad. If you're planning on marrying that little gal for this ranch and her money, I swear to you, I'll kill you. Well, then the only way to convince you and everyone else of my sincerity is to cure her before I marry, isn't that it? I don't want you to even try to do something you can't do. Not even try? And then after we're married, have everyone think I married her for her money? I don't want to hurt. All right, all right, then you come with me, because I'm going to prove to you that I'm not what you suspect. Garth, what are you going to do? I'm going to cure her. Now. Miss Celia, I want you to get Susan. But she's asleep. Please. I think you best get her, ma'am. I heard your voices. I was so excited, I couldn't sleep. My horse, what are you doing here at this hour of the night? Garth? 
Is anything wrong? No, Susan, nothing's wrong. Oh. Mr. Cartwright doubts my sincerity. He doubts my ability to cure you. Is that true, Hoss? Susan, I brought Mr. Garth here in the first place. I just want to be sure that he can help you. Oh, he's going to help me, Hoss. But when, Susan, when? Garth will pick the time, Aunt Celia. I have picked the time, Susan. The time is now. Now? But, Garth, you said... You said that I had to have complete faith first. That first we must marry. I know, Susan. But you do have faith in me, don't you? You see, Mr. Cartwright and your aunt, they question my motives. Hoss? Aunt Celia? Susan, we must prove them wrong. We work together day and night, both of us, so hard for this moment. Ever since we first met each other, we have built up your strength in me. Your strength that I could make you walk. Get up, Susan. I command you to. Get up and walk. I can't. I, Garth, command you to. That's about enough. No. Garth, wait, I know I can. Garth, no, wait, I know I can. Let's see you help me with Susan. I believed I could cure her. I believed I could cure her. God! No, God! 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 Susan. Susan, he's, he's just a man. But I love him, Oz. No. Oz, I love him. No, no. You fell, you fell in love with, with what you wanted him to be. I'm so sorry, Susan. It's all my fault. I'm sorry. It's 
That's all I can say. didn't make you walk. You walked because you wanted to walk. Susie, there's only one miracle maker. Yes. Yes, you're right. Oh, Hoss, I wish he knew. Oh, I wonder if it, I wonder if he'll ever come back. He learns what you just learned. He'll be back. But I'm going to wait for him, Hoss. Because he will be back. Is coming. There's a rider coming in. I think it's one of the Cartwrights. Put his horse away, Pablo. Where are the other men? All around you. Well, what about the ranch hands? They leave any behind? I went on a cattle drive except for the kid and his father. Yeah, we spotted the boy working fence up in the north section today. I think that's him riding in. What about the father? Rode off toward town this morning. I figure he's due back. You know what General Diaz said, nobody gets hurt. So you told me. And just where is our esteemed general now? He and Miguel rode up into the mountains. He wanted to study a layout out of the country. Still playing the tin soldier, huh? Listen, Forsyth. No, you listen. When Diaz ain't here, I'm in command. You got that? If you've killed him, General Diaz will feed us to the ants.
Silencio. Ahí viene alguien. trouble to stable your horse? Looks like you had a little accident, Mr. Cartwright. See how far you get. Is it always necessary that you men loot like bandits? You disgrace us, pistolero. Get out. Whatever you say, mi general. So this is the great Ponderosa. Look, I don't know who you are, General. Permit me then to introduce myself. I am Arturo Diaz, general in the army of Benito Juarez. Juarez doesn't have an army of bandits. We are not bandits. Then get these men out of here. My son needs a doctor. What is the matter with him? He's been hurt, wounded. Wounded? How did this happen? He was shot in the back. He was to be taken as hostage. He needs a doctor. A doctor is impossible. One of my men was seen in Virginia City. My enemies would know I am here. Where is the boy's bed? Upstairs. Perhaps I know a thing about wounds that you do not. Levantalo. Careful. Careful. Up this way. Up to Dios. Thank you. You see, senor, we are not bandits. I must apologize for my soldiers. They are good fighting men, but their manners. But we are not bandits. General, why are you here? Because at the moment, my country is fighting for its life against Maximilian, the tyrant. And because tomorrow, his mercenaries will use the lens of the Ponderosa to... to perform a certain act. If they are successful, my people face eternal slavery. What are they going to do here on the Ponderosa? You will learn all tomorrow, senor. Mm. That is a very interesting wound he has, is it not? No shotgun wound is interesting. No, but this one is special. The barrel of the shotgun was sawed off. Makes a big pattern. Saved his life. Which one of your men carries that kind of gun? 
Buenas noches, senor. You had better get some sleep. We have a long ride in the morning. I'm not riding anywhere. Stay here with my son. You look like a man who is fair, just. A man who believes in human dignity. See, si, you are. I believe you would do something for a people's liberty. What would you have me do? It may be necessary to have someone guide us through the back roads out of the mountains. You know the country. I can't leave my son alone. As soon as our work is done, you will be free to return to him. Vance. Pablo. Si, senor. I am sorry for this, senor, but he will stand guard at the top of the stairs. And now, until we ride in the morning. Buenas noches. Miguel. What happened to the boy? Look, General, I do my job. What happened to the boy? I was forced to shoot him. In the back? Now, look, Sims was there. He can tell you. I am not talking to Senor Sims. I'm talking to you, Senor Porcel. Take off your hat. I gave an order. It was your responsibility to see that no harm came to these people. You are a pistolero, hired to carry a gun. How do you think I should discipline you? That's up to you, General. In any way, El Presidente Juarez might think fit and proper. <laughs> yes. That does give one pause. I keep forgetting how your skill for killing has served my country's cause and earned the gratitude of our great leader. In the morning, give him his guns. You all right, amigo? He should not have hit you just for shooting a gringo. It wasn't for the shooting. This has been coming for a long time. He's jealous of my pull with Juarez. Well, he's played his hand, now I'll play mine. Uh, be careful, hombre. General Diaz is still el jefe. So he's a big man. I'll take care of him. You with me? I'm with you, amigo. But what of Senor Sims? Don't worry about Sims. Once we get our hands on that wagon, he'll be easy to convince. General. 
Get to your post. Pronto. Pistolero. He enjoys this. And you? I've had too much. Revolution takes a long time. But we have a saying. La fortuna sigue al hombre valiente. Fortune favors the brave. Even here we fight for the liberty of Mexico. Liberty of Mexico? One wagon? It is what is in the wagon, senor. Señor, yeah. adelante. Que se muere. Sí, señor. This is not your fight. Get up. Rice chill. Thought you were dead. For me, death is an old companion. Will you stay quiet? Hurry up with that water! Looks like you've won your victory, General. Get me a horse, bro. See me hand it on. Come 
Oh, killing you be a waste. A real waste. <laughs> Look what I got. Uh, come on, Forsythe. Back off. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Huh? Leave her alone. Second time you put a gun on me, you won't do it again. General Diaz, Forsyth said you were dead. Senorita, what is your name? Molly. Molly Reed. I was a passenger on the wagon. Passenger? There was to be no passenger. You will explain this. Well, I was on my way to San Francisco. I had no money. The wagon driver befriended me. He said I could ride in the back. Senor Cartwright, would you say she is speaking truly? Make any difference? How many men did we lose? All except Pablo, Miguel, Forsyth, and, and me. They were good men, good farmers, good fighting men. Gold. Si, senor. Gold. Stolen from my country by Maximilian's ministers. A precious metal that could buy freedom for a whole people. I pray that it will be worth the price we have paid in blood today. Where were they taking this? To San Francisco. And from there to Europe. But now, it will be used to defeat the tyrants. Adios, Senor Cartwright. We will not need you anymore. Truly, I'm sorry I brought you so much trouble. I, I will, I will pray for your son's recovery. Thank you. Back wound, you'll never make it to the border, General. I'm afraid he is right. One more favor I must ask of you. This time there is a bullet in my back. That doctor is still not possible. Let's get him back to the ranch. Put him in the wagon, Miguel. No. I will ride. I am not dead yet. I still command.
Miguel. Sí, jefe. Take Senor Cartwright, Suarez. You will want to see your son. Take the senorita with you. General, you've let that wound go too long. Did you ever take a bullet out of a man, Senor Seams? No, sir. I put plenty in him, though. Do not worry. I think Senor Cartwright will show you what must be done. Miguel! Jimmy, General. You will stand guard over the gold. Kill anyone who comes near it. In the end, eh? Si, senor. Feeling bad, General? Now, we will give you your last in surgery. You will find, senor, that a bullet goes into a man much easier than it comes out. No, 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 I do not need to hear it. Be afraid of, girl. Just want to talk a little. Sims told me about how those Indians killed your folks. You know, I've been wondering how come they didn't lift your scalp at the same time. I don't know. They just didn't. They're gonna say they just left you all alone, didn't they? You can fool Sims and the others, but not me, sister. Not for a minute. Where did you live after your folks were killed by the Indians? Did some Indians wake you up? Oh, no. San Francisco. What are you going to do in San Francisco? Work in some Barbary Coast dive for drinks, huh? No. no. Get out of here, Forsyth. If I catch in the air again, I'll kill you. Sure, Sims. Now you listen to me now. You stay in this house. Don't leave this room. I'll have Miguel guard you. I can, I can trust him. Are you all right? I've got to get back to the wagon, but I'll come back to you later. You've kind of taken a leg into that, Nina, huh? Look, Forsyth. If you've got anything to say to me, you say it straight and clear. Why did you join up the Juarez? To get yourself a little piece of land somewhere, right? You knew that. What are you driving at? What if I told you you could get that land, all the land you want, and soon? What would you say to that? I'd say you're out of your mind. With Diaz out of the way, we could split that goal between three of us, you, me, and Pablo, and buy a lot of land with a million dollars in gold. You mean kill Diaz? Why not? What's he to you? He pays you $50 a head to do his killing. Is he more important than a girl, than a land? Think about it, Sims. A million dollars for squeezing a trigger. When you figure on doing this? Sometime between now and the morning. I think about it. Sims, remember this. No matter where you go or what you do, you need money. Like I said, think about it. Go up to the house and get yourself something to eat. 
And while you're there, do me a favor. Watch after Molly. Si, señor. I'll watch her, señorita. Why Miguel? Oh, he wasn't smart like you, compadre. Couldn't see things our way. I didn't say I saw things your way. You will. Pablo, get a couple of shovels. We'll bury him deep and peaceful. Get him to the chair. Uh. Uh. I, I gotta go up and get us some help. Get back some help for the general. What are you gonna do? Get a couple of horses. But those men, those men are down there with the wagon. Uh. I'll go. No, Joe. I'll go with you. Joe. Don't Come move. On. Don't move. Do you hear, boy? Don't move. Don't let him out of this room until I get back. Do you understand? It's the cart, right? What if you don't come back? What are you doing here? Came to take care of the horses. Somebody's got to take care of them. I already done that. Come on, Blaine. There's a lot of heat in this leg. I'm trying to cool it off. Yeah. You seem to know a lot about horses. I know this much. If I don't get the heat out of this leg, this horse isn't going to be pulling any gold wagon tomorrow. You're doing pretty good with that horse. The man who makes a living toting a gun. I didn't always tote a gun. You were a farmer, Sims? I was once. 
at a little place in Tennessee. I worked like a mule on that land, but it weren't no good. Soil was all burned out. Then came three years of drought. It wiped me out. I heard a lot about that drought. A lot of people wiped out. Some of them came out west, put their roots down in new land. Yeah. A lot of them try to make it as homesteaders. For me, a gun is handier than a plow. You ever think of uh, putting your gun away, starting over on new land? I never think of nothing else. But the last two years, I've been, uh, well, I've been saving money. I've been putting it away. Man bought with blood, hard to plow. There ain't no other, mister. Yeah, there is. Up in Oregon. Free for the asking. Plenty of water. Good soil. You seen it? Yeah. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> what difference does it make? How's a man like me go back to living a normal life? Put away your gun. It's that simple. the rest of them. All that talk about the free land, starting over. Just a trick. I ought to put a bullet in both of you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Pull the trick. Sure, you're good with a gun. I wanted to get away here. He needs a doctor. But I meant every word of what I said. There's land up in Oregon and it's yours. All you have to do is take it. You haven't got what it takes like you said. It's easier to pull a trigger than to put a hand on a plow. Go ahead, pull the trigger. Give up any chance you ever had of making anything out of your life. Johnny. Johnny, listen to him. He's right. All right, it was a real pretty speech, Mr. Cartwright. Too bad he didn't fall for it. Don't try, Forsyth. So you swallowed that Oregon free land fairy tale he handed you, huh? Well, let me set you straight about a few things. Sure, there's free land in Oregon, lots of it. And with enough money, you can build your own Ponderosa. Without money, you'll be breaking your back for years to clear a few stinking acres. That's the difference, money. Think about that. Get back to the house, Carpet. Go ahead. Just... Nothing's decided, Forsyth. I'm still thinking on it. Don't take too long. this? You ain't crying, are you? No, I ain't crying. Hey, now, you are too crying. And shivering. Oh, your hands are like ice. Here, come on, sit down close to the fire. Here. This is good for you. It kind of gets your circulation going. I, I guess this must have been a hard day for you. I'm afraid I started feeling sorry for myself. Molly, what, what do you plan on, on, on doing after this? Well, I'm all alone. I guess I'll have to get a job in San Francisco. You mean on that Barbary Coast? As good a place as any. Oh, no, it isn't, Molly. You know better than that. Do I? Yes, you do. Oh, Molly, you... Just about the prettiest girl I ever did see. I... No! 
You don't know me. You don't know anything. Well, now, that's funny, because from the very first moment I saw you, it was like I'd known you all my life. Molly, it may sound crazy, but don't. what I'm asking you... Don't. I'm not what you think I am. <laughs> to me, to me, you're, you're everything that's, that's clean and, and pure and beautiful. I'm not. I'm not clean and pure and beautiful. Look at me. Look at me. That wagon driver knew. Forsyth knew. Everyone knows. Look at me. What am I supposed to see? A year ago, a Sioux war party raided our farm. They killed my father, burned him, and they made me watch. And then my mother. No, no. And then. They... No, no. But they let me live. Oh, yes, they let me live. And you know why? I'll tell you why. Molly, Molly, don't say it. Don't say it. Oh, I fought them as best I could. But how can you fight them? For a year, they kept me. A year. And I escaped. But I didn't escape. No. You can never escape a thing like that. Don't. Don't, Molly. Molly, I don't care. I don't care what happened. I don't care what anyone says. They never touched you, you hear me? Nobody ever touched you. Oh, Molly, Molly. Oh, nobody's ever gonna hurt you again. Nobody. Oh, Forsyth has a plan. I'm gonna have enough money to protect you from everything. Forsyth. You're not going to listen to him. Well, what's wrong with listening to him? At least it's a way. It's no way, Johnny. It's just plain cold-blooded murder. It's no way for you. It's no way for me. We're loading the gold. We'll be ready in five minutes. Are you coming? Go ahead. I'll be along in a minute. Johnny, it's no way. The man who shot your son was a murderer. The man who shot me was a traitor. He must be destroyed. General, come here. There's something else you've got to see. Do something. This is the best way, Johnny. All right. But I've got to do something to stop Forsyth. You'll do nothing, compadre. You either throw in with us right now or you're a dead man. In all eternity, few men have the chance to do something truly great. Something unselfish. Something that makes them bigger than other men. All Mexico would have been at your feet for the contribution you made to our liberty. But no, you chose something else. Something small and greedy. And that will destroy you. You don't scare me. You can die like any other man. There you are wrong! Pistolero. I am freedom for my people. I am death for those who would betray that freedom.
Dios, guarda nuestro país. I've got a job to finish. A job I promised the general. I've got to get that gold back to Juarez. Johnny. Molly, you wait here until I get back from Mexico. If it's all right with Mr. Cartwright. It's all right with Mr. Cartwright. And Johnny, I got two of my neighbors to escort you as far as the border. They're good friends of mine. I thank you, sir. Take care of yourself. It's a long ride. <laughs> I will. And, well, I better let Pablo drive the wagon. I'd hate to rob Juarez of the pleasure of meeting him. <laughs> Te veré pronto. You know what he said to you? No. He said, I'll see you soon. <laughs> 